Willow Desk says, I was wondering if you got a chance to look at the studies I mentioned last week about HCQ. Also, there has been some data showing COVID spreading from fecal aerosol. What are your thoughts and any tips for people living in large buildings? So very good question. The very first part of that, Willow Desk, I have been looking at ACQ studies. I would share some of those as well next week. For the second part, the fecal aerosol. So here, is a couple of articles. So this one here, probable evidence of fecal aerosol transmission of SARS-CoV-2 in a high rise building. And then here is another um, study, put a lid on it. Are fecal bioaerosols a route of transmission for SARS-CoV-2? So let me very quickly explain this. What, what they're talking about is the following. When we use the toilet. Let's see if I can draw a toilet. <clears throat> so when we use a toilet, what happens is when we flush it, when we flush it, the if the lid is not on it, so let's say the lid is here. If the lid is not on it and we flush the toilet, there are microscopic droplets that are formed, which are then projected in the air. And that is the aerosol. And because COVID patients have fecal transmission, even if they do not have GIT symptoms, then that means that the toilets will have the fecal aerosol material that would come out and that can spread. So in these two studies, in this study, what they had done was they looked at the surfaces near the washrooms and they measured the air after creating a simulation of the fecal aerosol in the washrooms of large buildings. And then they measured the air contamination in other parts of the building. And they found that the fecal material was the microscopic droplets were found on the surfaces. So that means if we use a toilet and then we do not cover it and then we flush it, then the fecal aerosol matter will actually come out in the air. It would circulate with the ventilation. It would stick to the surfaces around. And when some people would touch those areas, they can become infected as well. So fecal aerosol transmission is a possibility. Now the question is, how do we prevent that? The most important part is to put a lid on it, as the study said. But the problem is that you may have seen some public toilets. They actually do not have a lid. You just flush them, and there is no lid there. So if that is the case, we cannot do much. Or maybe there are those papers that you can put on here. Otherwise, if you are in a place where the toilet can have a lid on it, then before flushing, put the lid on. So that is this. This study here, it is a small study, but here what they saw was they had nine infected patients in a large, tall building with 193 other residents, and then they measured that fecal aerosol transmission was happening. Yeah, so very, very good question, Ray Walker, uh, that eventually you're going to end up touching the lid as well. So uh, when uh, I have been avoiding the public toilets, plus I do not live in a public building as well, so others are not using it near me. But yeah, it is correct that when you are going to put the lid on it, then the lid itself is going to become contaminated by all that material. And as you touch it to lift it and touch it to put it down, you are going to contaminate your hands. So either use a tissue paper or wash your hand like crazy afterwards. But yes, that is still a risk. So very good point, uh, Ray. All right. So I hope that that answers your question, uh, Willow Desk. Very good question. So what are your thoughts on any tips for the people living in large buildings? Same thing, wash your hands a lot, keep, keep your surfaces clean. The vents are going to, vent, to circulate the fecal material as well. So you can't do much about that. Um, 
and then please put the lid on the toilet seats. Tell everyone to do that. Use uh, gloves or use uh, tissue paper to lift the lid and put it back. 